Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? Top of the morning to you. Uh, you guys probably been wondering what's going on with these wild pigs and stuff and the snaring operation. Well, I'm not going to do it this year. Uh, there's just not enough pigs out there. There's too many deer out there, and I'm not going to hang up any deer in snare. So I'm not going to do it this year. There's only was only two wild boars hitting my bait. I've had plenty of time out there for a whole pack of pigs to come in there, and it hasn't happened, and it's not going to happen. There's been somebody in my area trapping. Uh, these pigs get naughty. They start getting in these lawns and start tearing up, causing thousands of dollars of damage, and then here comes the trappers. One phone call to FWC, Florida Wildlife Commission, and then here comes the, wild, uh, the pig trappers. So I've got a hunch that's what's happened. No big deal. I will uh, check them in the. Uh, I'll start pre baiting in the fall of 2020 and see where we're at. But here's one. Here's kind of something kind of comical. I thought I'd show you uh, that I caught on cam recently. Here, here's the boar, and here's Mr. Little Raccoon, about a half-grown raccoon. Uh, he says, uh, "You're on my corn pile, buddy, and you better get your booty out of here." Let's run that back again. Here he is at the bottom. Here he goes. Get up that tree, boy. I'll kick your booty. This guy is the only one been coming in. There's been a big boar with a big white blaze with a huge tusk on him. I only saw him once on camera. These things are very rangy. They travel a long ways looking for the ladies. And, uh... Yeah. I did the same thing back in early days uh, until I found Miss Daisy then and then I quit chasing the ladies, okay? So anyway, so that's little Mr. Boar. So that's the whole story on the pig operation. Now, uh, what I thought I would show you is what's going on with a little fishing tackle operation. What I use, now here's my little book of knowledge, just a little, uh, this is a, these plastic leaflets in here. As you can see, these, this is what I use to put all my rigs in once they're completed. We're going to make one of these up. Uh, and, and it just, it's got, at the top here, you've got, uh, On this side it folds over in that pocket and you can reach in and get your rigs it saves tearing everything up getting things tangled up in a, in a flipping mess and uh, I keep everything in here here's some Spanish mackerel uh, rigs sabiki rigs we call them that happens to be a triple I tie these myself. These are actually made with a um, a coffee. Did you get your coffee in? If you turn them in, so you can use anything. Potato chip bags, anything. Anything flashy silver. This will also catch your uh, jackfish. Here's a pompano rig. It's got little uh, floats on it. <coughs> and actually those floats are earplugs. Those are earplugs. You can put a little small piece of crab on it. So, but the majority of these are the rigs that I make up, the tandem rig. Well, we'll go ahead and go through that. This whole thing, by the way, goes inside my pack. So does that box. That's just nothing more than a uh, my tackle box I, I put in. Uh, it's an ammo box. I've got my leads in here. I've got a tape measure. Uh, I've got some glass eyeglass wipes I keep my uh, my pliers in there and uh, my needle nose pliers in there and stuff like that so anyway I thought I would go through a rig for you tandem rig I buy my hooks <coughs> I buy my hooks by the hundred and I keep them in a, in a pill bottle so uh, Get out a couple of hooks here. 
these are called tail hooks and I'm quite sure that these are I think these are 2 aught 2 aught tail hooks they're kind of like a circle hook in a way these things I've caught I get these from Memphis Net and Twine by the way go out there and pull up Memphis Net and Twine they'll send you a free catalog and these are the hooks I use uh, they catch everything. I've caught 30, 30 plus inch snook with these red, big red fish. I've even ca ca caught small pin fish with these. Everything seems to be. Well, you saw on the other day, I caught the shark. Uh, what I use for uh, the main line is, is 30 pound test. 30 pound test. And I need to get my clips out here. There's my swivels. Got tons of swivels, snaps. So here's the components to this tandem rig that I use. So you need a swivel. And you need a snap at the bottom. So those are the components, the four components, two hooks, swivel, and that. Now for the main line, I use 30, 30 pound fluorocarbon. And I just pull out roughly oh probably three feet. first thing you're going to put on is your snap. This is your bottom where your weight goes. I'm hoping you can see this. The lighting's not too good in here. So you pull up that much and you go over the top. One, two, three, four, five, you come back through the middle, the bottom here, come through the bottom, this is called a fisherman's knot, then you come back over and bring it back through this loop here you create, and you pull that down a little bit, not too much, a little bit, and you wet it, and then it slides down. Take your thumbnail and pull it in tight, cinch that baby up tight. Something I forgot to get is a pair of needle nose. For this operation. Grab your swivel, tighten it up, and then push that knot down snug like that. That's it. Trim off your extra. You can make these up, see at the dining room table. And, uh, okay, now the next thing you're going to do is come up, oh, a little ways from the bottom. And you're going to come over. And you're going to come through. Bring the end of your line up. You created this loop, created that loop, come through once, come through twice, and pull it down slowly, slowly, and watch what happens. It turns into a figure eight. I don't know if you can see that, it turns into a figure eight. Like so. You've got a hole here and a hole here. Now, take your 20 pound mono, 
fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon's nice because fish don't see it underwater, it turns invisible. I'm going to pull out about 8 inches. It's a little overkill. Again. Through the eyelet of your hook. And again, a fisherman's knot. One, two, three, four, five. And then back through here. Wet it. Wet it and pull it up tight. See, now you've got this piece here. Actually, that should have been a little bit longer. If you don't wet this stuff with saliva, it'll melt on you. No good. Now, here's your, here's your little loop here. Your figure eight. Actually, I put on binos for this. It just quicker for me. This is not the best lighting in here. That's why I use my binos. Okay, so I've got my hook here. And I passed it through that hole there on that figure eight. I'm pulling it up, and I'm going to come back down through this figure eight over here. The other side of my figure eight. like so. Now I pull that up and my hook comes right up here close. Leave about that much sticking out from that loop. Now pinch this off and on the right side, I'm, gonna, I'm right handed, my left hand, I'm pinching that off and you make a loop like this. Just come around and make a loop like this. Now you've got your main line here Got your main line, 30 pound mon, main line, and you made that loop. Now come over the top. Come over the top and catch both of these lines. Come through once. Come through again. Three. And I usually come through and get, catch it with my mouth, catch it with my teeth. Four. Come through like that. Now you've got four. Now you're going to pull slightly to snug that up. Now you've got two batches of knots there, basically. Okay? So now what you do is you grab your 30 pound main line over here. This is the little, this is the little 20 pound tag line. Grab your main line over here in your right uh, hand, hold on to the hook with your left hand, wet this whole thing really well. Pull on, pull on your hook holding this over here, your main line, and start pulling. And watch the two hooks come together, the, the two knots come together, like that. That is tightened up, that's there now. Snug that, pull that a little bit, come back to your main line, pull on that and your hook. That tightens that thing up really nice. Now reach over here, you've got this extra 20 pound. 
fluorocarbon here. Snip that off. Now you've got your line hanging like so. You're going to have your weight here, okay, your weight down here, and there's your rig. Now come up, come up about, about that far, and do that again. You're going to do that same thing again. Come here, and you're going to go once here, reach through, grab it, pull it through, come in, get it again, pull through, go slowly, bring it down. Don't get too tight now because you're, you won't be able to get your, your uh, line in. And just when it rolls over, it makes that figure eight. I'm hoping you can see that. It just rolls over. You made that figure eight. Don't pull it too tight. You won't be able to get your mono through there. And do that exactly the same thing. And then you come to the end. Put on your other hook. And then you put your swivel at the top. Where did my swivel go? It's here somewhere. Anyway, you're going to put your swivel at the top where the fisherman's knot here. That's it. Kind of fold this up and put this in your in your book of knowledge. Yes. Okay. Now. Now what we want to do is uh, I wanted to show you these weights. Here's a three ouncer. There's some weights, and they're made with they're made with hydraulic cement. You can get this at Lowe's. Made by Sacre hydraulic cement leak stopper. Get you some plastic bowls, plastic or paper bowls, and uh, a little plastic spoon, and put a little bit of water in the bottom, and then just start putting your stop leak in. Get everything rigged up first. Put your stop leak in, mix it up. This sets up, up, sets up extremely fast. And uh, I weigh them out, and here's one 2.7 ounces, here's one 3 ounces. I'm going to make some 4 ounces. I like 4 ounces. Uh, these are something you can make cheaply. Uh, here's your cup. You get your wood burning tool like so. And you melt a little hole in here. You want the hole big enough to pass this in. This is what's going to go in. It's about what, 4 inches or so? Now I'm going to make these, as you can see, these were only poured to here. I'm going to pour these on up to about here. The ones I'm going to make, I'm going to pour them in up to about there. That should give me a four-ouncer. Play it by ear and you'll figure it out. Okay? Now then, to get this line, you just take a chunk. I love this stuff here. You get a, you get a roll of this. You can get this at Memphis Net and Twine. You can get it on Amazon. This is called, this is tarred tarred th th number 30 nylon this stuff I use for everything wrapping sludge hammer handles hammer handles knife handles all kind of stuff and I use it a lot in the catfishing so I just cut a small length of it here so we want to get we want to get this here pulled through this cup so I just take this here and I pinch it down and I shove it through there like so. Now take your four inches or so, put a knot each in each end, knot on each end, take your needle nose and tighten it up. All right, now you got your loop through, just stick it through like that, about the center. Pull it down and pop it through. Now you've got your line through there and you're ready to pour. Now you can pull this back a little bit so your knots are into the into the mud a little bit better. But that's basically it. Once you mix this up, you just set these down, get a bunch of these ready, and mix up your mortar. 
your quick your stop leak and just pour it in whatever you think you're going to want in there. You can experiment. Now you can take a little grain scale. That's how I determine this weight. Come back in 24 hours. Take your scissors and come in here and cut this and uh, all the way up to the top and then you can peel this off. You can peel this off and your and your part will pop out like so. So you don't mind, you know, these are so cheap. You buy a bucket of this, I don't know, this stuff ran about, I think, $9 and change. You can make a ton of these with that bucket. I mean, a ton of them. You can make them any size you want. But four ounces works pretty good for me in surf fishing. Uh, that's that. So... I thought I would show you that little trick there. I've got a monster possum in my trap out there. He is monstrous. And uh, I'm going to take you out there and show him to you. Look at the size of this one, guys. Look at the size of them choppers. Wow. All right, what I got here, guys, is a, uh, this is my homemade uh, catch tool. And uh, just a piece of conduit here. Looks like uh, one inch. And I put eighth cable down through it. And then I went and uh, put a screwdriver down on this one side right here down in there and then I put it on the anvil and once I shoved my cable through I dropped it down in on this side the cable runs to about about in here about to here and then I just smashed it down to pin that in there and what you do is get one of these uh, clothesline this is just a clothesline adjuster and once you pull it back once you pull this back, then you can see move your cable in and out. Once you once you uh, let it go, it locks in. You can't you can't pull this out at all. So uh, this is what I use to transfer my critter. I'm fixing to go on my hike, my morning hike. You know I do that every day. So I don't want to leave this in the back of my truck to get stolen that's a high dollar trap that I built so I've got an old cheap dilapidated one here that I've had for a kajillion years <clears throat> so let's get this guy out of here and get him ready for transport hopefully we can get him out of here without a big issue There we go. He's a big one, guys. You don't want to go, do you? There we go. Get your fat tail in there, boy. Wow, he takes up the whole trap. That's one of the bigger ones I've ever caught right there, guys. He's a monster. All right, he's going to get a little ride this morning. And uh, the, the, park, the park can have another critter. How about that? All right, I got my camera over here.
Good morning, Beehive. They're chilling. They're all chilling. Let's take a peek down in here and see what they're doing. Oh, yeah. The girls are chilling this morning. Here's my bait pile. Game before they've been in it last night here. I had my wood over here drying. Let's put that. I get put fresh water in here. I change that out about every well every week. I put in fresh water. Everything's drinking out of it. Here's my camera setup. I got a half a block there, and this keeps the coons from knocking it over usually. But they're pretty pesky little devil. How many hits we got here? Down to 40 some percent. Wow. 115 hits. Let's go inside. Let's go inside and see what we got. Just for fun. Okay, guys. Here's a Florida marsh rabbit on this thing. I don't know if you guys ever seen a Florida marsh rabbit. They have smaller ears than a cottontail. And they got a little short, stubby body. This is a fairly good sized one. It's full grown. And they got a real brown coat to them. Let's go down through here and see what we got. Mr. Bunny loves his corn. I put molasses on that corn too. There he is. All right, he disappeared. I've got some rats coming in here and flying squirrels coming in here too. Oh, there's Mr. Raccoon. He's soon to be food. Mullet, mullet Greg. That's not a very large coon. I sell the smaller ones for five bucks and the big ones for ten. And Greg wants a lot of them. He's got a birthday coming and they have a big cookout and they have barbecued coon. Hey, whatever blows your hair back, right? I'll sell them to him all day long. And he'll buy them all day long too. Well, Mr. Coon's really enjoying himself here. Let's just click through here and see what other critters we got coming around here. Apparently that possum, he's been coming in here hitting this bait. But apparently I caught him before he came over to this bait pile because I had some nice sardines in there for him. This guy's just camping out here. I had two of them coming in, a larger one and a medium one. She's getting a drink of that nice fresh water I put in there. Oh, he's all fat and happy. He's going back in the swamp. Oh, what is this critter over here? What is that thing? Huh. That may be a rabbit. Well, something's firing this camera off and I don't I don't see it. Oh, it's this here. It's here it is over here. It is, it's a rabbit. It's it's a marsh it's a marsh rabbit. Yeah, I see him now. He's just sticking his head in the shot tripping the camera yeah here he is he's back over here in the pile our little marsh our little marsh bunny there he is getting his face right in the camera uh mr coon's back or it's another coon
you sure eating up a lot of photos photos here we're up to 70 hits so far Here's our little March Bunny again. Oh, he's getting the right... He's getting to be a little camera hog, isn't he? Got his ears chewed up. Must have gotten a fight with somebody. Got a notch out of his ear. Whoa, what was that? Let's back this up here. Oh, Mr. Possum. Mr. Possum came in. Now... I've seen this guy before. He's got a he's got a broken tail, and that's not the one in the trap. I just we just transferred over. This is another guy here. Mr. Bunny's going to go down the trail. Now he's back. Now Mr. Coon's back. Maybe that's all we got today, guys. I don't know. I had a, I had a buck coming in here. He's a goofy-looking thing. Yeah, that's that's it. The buck didn't come in last night. Squirrels are here now. Okay, that's it, guys. That's it. No deer. He's got the buck. He's got something about this coming out of one side of his head then he's got this little crooked snag coming out the other side or I don't know what's up with that he should he should have four four inch spikes or or, or bigger coming out of his head but anyway he's got a big body on him but they're not consistent and I haven't seen my eight point I don't know if somebody got him or not he hasn't been coming in at all and I had three or four big does coming in and I haven't seen them and two weeks so i don't know what's going on with my deer maybe somebody in my neighborhood's harvesting them i don't know but i've had orders from miss daisy you leave them deer alone leave them for seed so you know sometimes i listen to miss daisy sometimes i don't you know it's just the way i roll all right guys i thought i'd show you a little fish and tackle this morning we're going to be getting back out there on them because I'm not going to be snaring no pigs this year. We'll see what's going on in 2020. And uh, they come and go. They come and go a lot. So I didn't harvest any. not going to harvest any this year. I didn't harvest none last year. But the years prior to, I've been getting two pigs a year out of that same woods. Anyway, give us more time to fish. I'll see you guys on the next one. Be happy. Be strong and we got to keep getting it on. See ya.